doing today? Sami Abbasad here. We are going to be covering uh, climactics today. The title of my webinar is How the Professional Catches a Falling Knife. I'm going to get started um, in just a second here. But I want to broadcast to Facebook now. And we should be live on Facebook. Hi, everybody. Hope you're having uh, a good start to your week so far. This is Sami Abusad. I'm Director of Education at T3 Live. Coming on live from the coaching room for Strategic Day Trader members. We're starting off with the discussion part, the lesson part, uh, rather than the coaching part. Uh, I actually did this last week, but um, my audio didn't go through, I guess for some reason, and so there was no sound. So I'm actually repeating it uh, this week. Also last week I had uh, I had a doctor's appointment uh, and I, um, that I was rushing to, and I uh, kind of went through it a little too, too fast. So hopefully this time um, you're able to hear me, and, um, and if you are, please hit the like button, especially if you find benefit in today's video. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, and uh, let's see what we can uh, what we can do today. Uh, what we can uh, cover. Okay, a disclaimer: just to let you know that trading is risky, and that whatever we discuss today is for educational purposes only. All right. Okay. First question here is: What would you say, in layman's terms, language? What would you say is the definition? of a climactic what would you say is the definition of a stock that went climactic to the downside or to the upside doesn't really matter we had a couple of good climactics today in the room and um, this is a strategy that was my bread and butter strategy a few years up until two years two three years ago and then it stopped being my bread and butter strategy because it just wasn't there anymore and I mean the setups weren't there anymore and recently they resurfaced uh, amazingly they actually resurfaced let me show you for example what we found today CMRX I want to show you that first on the daily chart last week I suggested uh, I can't believe I didn't do it but I suggested doing it as a climactic short under 273 see this up 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 widest bar and then another bar on top and biggest volume that's 73 that's 71 that's 73 whatever that's 73 short look at this it fell apart so it would have been a great swing but look what it did today also that's also it was a climactic buy on the 15 minute chart so down 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 nice volume we never got the like a huge volume spike at the bottom but we got it a couple of bars before in fact the, the bar before the last red bar had the highest volume bar in, in days probably right? you'd have to go back to that breakout to see a bigger volume bar uh, but the point of this is to say that climactics in simple terms are stocks this is my definition at least a parabolic price acceleration to the point of exhaustion so the stock either reaches extreme greed when it's up 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 and then the last batch of buyers finally can't take the pain of not being in it anymore they jump in uh, you know they think this is going to the moon i better get it here before it's it's too late once that last batch of buyers commits then there's no more buyers so you get that big move up and then the acceleration or big move down and then the panic acceleration again if this had one more bar or if if we got a, a bar that I like the bars when they're gradually getting bigger and bigger like so when they're getting bigger and bigger so in this case if we had gotten just one more wide range red bar it would have been absolutely picture perfect still was pretty good was really good I would say and notice how it popped over 182 by 70 by 176 that's only six cents okay it popped 40 okay it popped 40 cents 
So multiple R's, multiple risk units. We also saw one other one, which was pretty nice, but a little climb. Oh, I forget the symbol. It was CV. I can look it up because I still have it in my platform. I think I do. Oh, CVNA. It was a little one. It wasn't very extended. CVNA. And I guess it dropped just a little bit. It was a mini climo. See it? But very, very little. To tell you the truth, it should have made over an R. So short under 91.35 by 91.53, that's 20 cents. It got, it gave us 45 cents at the bottom there, which was, I think, either the 20 MA on the two or the one. See it? So it did reach a target. So it would have made some money if anybody played it. I am still guilty of not being aggressive enough when it comes to climactix meaning i pass on a lot of them too many of them and right now climactics are working really well okay the reason why um uh, i pass on a lot of them because is because they the last two three years this has been you know on the back bur burner for me as a strategy it simply wasn't there the setups, I, I could only find one a week at the most. I'm not going to make a living t taking one a week, right? And if that at all. So I'm still kind of starting to get a little more active, aggressive playing climactics. But right now, they are working really, really well. So for me, if I were to just give it a simple definition, I would say climactics are... When, when we're talking about charts, is a parabolic price acceleration to the point of exhaustion. If it's a climactic to the downside, it means exhaustion of the sellers. So you get panic or extreme fear. If it's climactic to the upside, it means exhaustion of the buyers. At any given time, at any given price, there is a limited amount of buyers or sellers. So we're talking about the exhaustion of those buyers that are currently available to buy the stock at that price, okay? Uh, the question I'm uh, getting here in the coaching room, which if you're on social media, you don't see because this is uh, only available to room members, is are the actual setups back to normal? I would say yes, and slightly better than normal, meaning even mediocre or, you know, really less than ideal setups are working pretty well. So yeah, I would say so. I, I would say so that they're back and back in a in a strong way all right now what we're looking for just so you know just so everybody knows what we're looking for is that vertical dive that vertical move down the stock can be down fifty dollars in a row or fifty bars in a row okay and not be climactic something like this would not be considered climactic even if the stock had dropped from 50 bucks to five bucks in the same day, it still wouldn't be considered climactic. You want the stock to accelerate. You want it to be going at 100 miles an hour and then to really go at 150 or whatever, the fastest speed possible, which is vertical in this case. So that's what you want. Stocks do it, set up or go climactic in different ways. I'll show you some of the ways in which they go climactic just need a whiteboard or you know this is PowerPoint let me maybe create a new just a blank slide like so okay great here's a blank slide for you okay so here's how they go climactic the easiest one is the, what I call the waterfall is when the when, it, when you look at it it's just like a waterfall it's a vertical dive or you know somebody jumping off of a diving board. You're supposed to, to hit the water at a 90 degree angle as much as possible, right? That's a dive. That's the easiest and prettiest climactic you can have. Something like this, that's a waterfall, right? Um, but they don't always happen like this. Sometimes, which is the most common way the they stocks go climactic, is by being in a really strong downtrend that accelerates, okay? That just prints one or two wide range bars at the bottom, and that's it. You might say, well, that's just one or two wide range bars at the bottom. That's true, 
but it's or, it had already dropped a lot prior to that. So I call this the grind plus acceleration. You can, you can call it whatever you want. First one I call the waterfall, this one I call the grind and acceleration. I need to erase what I just drew, so make, it, make sure you take a picture or listen to the recording later on. Here's the third way in which stocks go climactic. This is uh, this is the most, uh, I have the highest uh, batting average with this setup, but it's not very common. Here it is. You have a stock that's down a lot, climactic, but instead of bouncing, it goes sideways for a couple bars, sometimes more. You get the breakdown and then a narrow range bar after the breakdown. And then the stock takes out the narrow range bars high. So this is what I call the breakout with no follow, the breakdown with no follow through. So the entry is would be over that narrow range bar, stop under the lows. This is by far, I have the highest batting average on this setup by far, but it's rare. Okay, it's rare. I can't, I don't find it that every day like I do with the waterfall or the other one, the the grind plus acceleration. The fourth way in which stocks go climactic is when you when news hits the wires during the day. Midday, news comes out and the stock jumps. And so here's here's what, how it looks. Stock would be just going about its business sideways and then bam, big pop. What I learned is to never ever fade the initial move. Never, because it always fails. I mean, at 90 plus percent. If the stock continues to go higher, starts to print multiple bars like this slowly, then you can fade the secondary move on a news climactic. But the initial pop or initial drop on news, don't do, don't fade. You lose money, I guarantee it, over 90% of the time, if not 100% of the time. I guarantee it, guaranteed, guaranteed, guaranteed. Because I, I did it a million times. Until I, until I learned how to do it. So only do it. So the reason for this, by the way, is because when the news hits the wire, that's HFTs and algos uh, buying it, Wall Street. And then this is what happens. Usually comes in a little bit, just a little bit to trigger everybody in it, and starts to bounce back up as novice people and the public get the news as well. And now, if it starts to go like this, now the bars are getting bigger. This move is, you know, on top of an already big move. You can fade the secondary move, okay? But not the first move. First move is not fadeable. So there are primarily four different ways in which stocks go climactic. I just showed you all four. But showing you all four is not enough. So I wanna walk you through the step-by-step -step process that I have prepared for you to make sure you understand how it's done, all right? Question, what does the wide range bar acceleration signify towards the end? Great question. Um, I think I already answered it actually, yeah. It signifies that everybody's rushing out if it's to the downside or everybody's finally getting in if it's a climb or to the upside like this one. See, so climb active to the upside means People can't take the pain anymore of not being in it. Maybe they thought about buying it at 24, at 25, 26, when it starts to go higher. W human beings have, myself included, of course, we have about the same threshold for pain, for suffering, after which we just, just give up, okay? And so if you were thinking about it at 24, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and you didn't buy it at 27, that's when everybody starts to think, everybody that hasn't already committed starts to think, oh my God, I better get on this because it's going, it's gonna be the next Apple. So we have about the same threshold, you know, that same threshold of pain. And so that's why you get this huge spike in volume, 840,000 shares on that five minute bar, okay? It was actually the last five minute bar, this last five minute bar. Or, you know, the one before it, we, we got, you don't have to have the biggest bar at the absolute bottom. Remember the CMRX today? Um, 
we didn't get the biggest bar at the absolute bottom. It was a couple of bars before, I think. See it? The, the bar, uh, two bars before. So, but once you get that big v volume bar, it means it, the bottom is in or is very, very, you know, is very close to being the bottom. So it's the, to the downside, it means the panic set in. People panicked. Once they panic out, then you can, Wall Street says, oh, let me take that off your hands. You're, you're suffering with this. You're struggling. You're losing money. Let me take that off your hands. When they're, or they, the saying, famous saying, when there's blood in the streets, you, you finish it, right? It's time to, to buy stocks, right? So that's the famous saying, and it's true. Likewise, when you have uh, irrational exuberance, which is the title of a book written by, um, what's his name? Alan Greenspan, I think, former Fed ch chief, wrote irrational exuberance. When you get that, then the stock is usually climactic. For example, IYR, real estate, in 2000, and we're at the top, by the way, right now, pulling back a little bit. This is the monthly chart. That's irrational exuberance. Look at this. Up, 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 up. Start to print wide range bars. And this is a, a sector. This is actually a sector. Or gold, uh, or oil. Or gold also, but, you know, just showing you. But I need to add more data here, probably. Oil, remember oil? Up, 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 up. And then look at the wide range bars. 2008, what USO went to 120. 120 and one penny. And then crash, right? Uh, or how about the queues in uh, the tech bubble? That's irrational exuberance. This is the market. Look at this. Up, up, and vertical. Vertical. So from there, you get the collapse. You just, you, it's always, it always comes. Now, does it come right away, or does it sometimes take another bar or two before it really happens? Sometimes it takes another bar or two. But that's what it is, is... On the upside, it's extreme greed. To the downside, it's panic, extreme fear, basically. Okay? This is what I call the waterfall. This is what I call the grind. Notice from, even though it rallied from about 2350 to 27, it was not climactic at all. Why? The same speed, the same angle. Sure, 90 miles an hour, but no acceleration. Now, vertical. See it? It's exactly vertical. That's not sustainable. So this is what I call the pre-climactic part. I used to actually have a strategy for it to play it long when I see a stock that's up a lot but not yet climactic. When I see that it's starting to accelerate but not vertical. I used to actually jump in it long. But the but I, ha I, had a, I had a problem with it. I couldn't find a good entry oftentimes. So I came up with my kind of infamous saying right now in the room is the fall in entry. You just fall in. It's as though, pretend like you're walking into something and you just fall in it, into a pool or something. It's the same thing, you fall into the stock. So if it's up a lot and it's entering into that pre-climactic phase where it's up a lot but it refuses to pull back. Uh, but, uh, but then the last couple of years, the volatility died down quite a bit and you know, market became a lot more efficient. Um, so, you know, I haven't I haven't played any of these pre climos in a long time. Maybe, hopefully, uh, we start to see them more and more, like we, we have started recently. Look at this stock. I will tell you the news on this stock. This, uh, this stock that day, the news came out that Intel was going to buy them. It's a technology stock. And take a look. It had been getting bought nicely here on the way up, and... The pros already probably heard, got the news, the rumor. When the novices heard about it, that's what happened. It went vertical. Okay? So that's, that's when you fade it. That's when you fade it. As long as it's printing small green bars in a control, and rallying in a controlled fashion, you can't fade it. In fact, you want to play it long, if anything. If it goes vertical, that's when you look to fade it. And that's a climactic sell setup as good as they come as good as they come doesn't they don't really come much better than this okay they don't come much better than this either that's xcc we played it as a i called it as a breakout 
got in it long and and then got to target and went beyond and i was like oh wow got out of it and then went climactic <laughs> and then to and then to the downside again short stop and it dropped it went from bottom to top back to the bottom 25 bucks that day i still remember it 25 bucks that's showing you about 10 that's showing you about 10 that's 20 it actually moved 25 bucks i couldn't fit it in the on the page i mean it, it just it was incredible so so notice again up 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 is it climactic yet is it climactic yet the answer should be no now it's a watch it's a really good watch notice the wide range bar now notice the volume oh yeah okay so it's starting to go climb oh, and then the entry is under the last bars low now we're going to talk about which time frames to use what targets to also use stuff like this uh, question from dd where would you enter short where would you place a stop what time frame we're going to talk about that next okay just sit tight and um, we're going to talk about it okay so if the first thing to to know is there are two types of climbos there are you know i showed you four ways in which stocks go climactic in okay but there are within those four there are two types you want to differentiate them by these two types the first is what i call a mini climactic meaning it is climactic it did go vertical on the intraday charts see this it did become climactic on the intraday but the daily is a brand new bar in this in this new trend this was not a great daily meaning this was into resistance a good daily to short but sometimes you have a stock that's a total breakout super bullish that goes climactic on the intraday those you want to be a little more careful shorting this one was okay short because it was in a long-term downtrend and popped really hard into resistance so it was okay short but the point of this is to say mini climactic means it's only climactic on the intraday charts on the five minute primarily not on the daily full climactic is when it's climactic on the intraday that was totally climactic on the intraday notice again the big drop down 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 and notice the wide range bar notice the volume biggest volume that's climactic just draw a line over it you would see that it's ver that it went vertical which means it went climactic and climactic on the on the daily chart if it's climactic on both the intraday primarily the five minute and the daily then this is considered a full climactic you'll see that you'll see why that's important later on but just keep in mind that full climactics mean they're the the sellers are exhausted have puked out on both the intraday the day traders as well as the swing traders the daily long-term traders so when you get the when it when it bottoms it's much you get a much bigger rally usually right everybody's out and um, and it's much more reliable you're, you're, we're not talking about just the the intraday charts we're talking about also the daily now the question is why is it that uh, why did i just say that you you we often get a much bigger rally when it's climactic on both the intraday and the daily does anybody know why because my friends you have if everybody panics out it means on the way up there are no sellers they're already all out so the stock is not gonna you know move up and then there all oh, the sellers start to come back and then it's, they sell it no they're all out for the most part does that make sense now you might say well what about that red bar what about this here weren't there sellers of course but maybe those were day traders scalpers that bought it at the bottom and sold it here sold it here there's always sellers I just mean the original owners puked out the original owners capitulated okay that's what I mean but are there day traders in and out in and out sure at any given time there are uh, day traders algos okay all right so when the daily is showing two or more consecutive red bars or today is it one wide range bar it doesn't have to be two or more wide, big red bars could be just one wide range bar in the direction of an extended daily meaning that the daily was away from the 20 ma then that qualifies as full climactic i didn't want to annotate every chart with the moving averages so i just did it on the first one 
the red the red uh, line is always the 200 MA and I use simple moving averages the blue is always the 20 on every time frame the black I use it on intraday time frames is the eight period moving average it's not really very useful during the day I keep it on my charts it's mostly useful for the open for gaps at the open okay when you have a stock that gaps a lot like con today was a nice play right usually by the time the moving average the 20 catches up the stock will have already dropped a lot or moved a lot so I look to play it off the 8 in the morning off the 8 period moving average but f but then I don't want to you know make the effort to remove it off all my t time frames I, so I just keep it but the two main moving averages that I use are the 200 and the 20 okay the 20 is extremely important for this strategy all right so so far so good so far I hope makes makes perfect sense and we just covered what the difference is between mini and full full climactics now here's a question for you now uh, students in the strategic day trader room which are now in the coaching room already know the answers so this is just for those tuning in on social media would this be considered a full or a mini climb on the one minute chart notice how it was down a lot and accelerated would this be considered, you'd say, full or mini? And then was it a good climactic buy setup or not? Would you say this was good? Look at the volume bar, the COG bar, that big green bar. And the answer is uh, none, of the, none of the room members are actually answering because they already know the answer. The answer is you can't determine whether it's full or mini based on the one-minute chart. You have to look at the daily, okay? And then the, 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 the second question is, was this a good climb? Well, the answer is, who the heck knows? We have to look at it on multiple time frames. The one minute is not sufficient. 99% of the time is not sufficient. And that's why at the bottom I say, never trade in a vacuum. When you have multiple time frames in alignment, the odds of success increase exponentially. So you have to look at multiple time frames. Now, how do you look at multiple time frames? I'm going to show you that in a minute. Now here, uh, I just want to show you that even no matter how good the strategy is, no matter how good of a trader you are, no matter how, uh, you know, how well defined the strategy is, you have to look at the big picture. For example, this sure looked climo. Look at how many green bars in a row. Look at how the bars got bigger and bigger. Look at how it went vertical. Look at the size of that last bar here. Look at the volume. Looked good, right, as a short. Five minutes wasn't too bad either. It rallied from, well, it rallied from 28.20 to 30 bucks in three in 15 minutes. Huge move. You'd think that's a short. Look at the volume it got. But no, it wasn't a good short because of the daily. Look at how extended the daily was. It was down here. Look how extended it was. So w once the daily bottomed, you don't want to be fading it, even if the intraday looked good short. So you always, again, you remember this you always want to you can't trade in a vacuum you have to look at multiple time frames and make sure that the picture makes sense across the multiple time frames all right so that's the message or that's the the lesson in this on this slide okay now here's my process for playing climactics i, I just want to tell you that the five minute on the intraday time frames is my main time frame because it's not too lo long of a time frame and it's not too short like the one or the two. The one or the two are great for for entries, but for analysis they're not. There's too much noise. They're too small. For an when you're analyzing whether a stock is climactic or not on the intraday charts, you don't want to be looking at the smallest possible time frame. You want to kind of back off and look at some of the larger time frames to see if it really is climactic or not now the 15 is an excellent time frame too but the problem with it is that it's too slow sometimes the stock can drop go climactic on the five and bounce before you even spot it on the 15 so the 15 is a little too slow five is just perfect absolutely perfect here's my process for playing climactics Please understand, I'm not really trying to teach you the entire strategy as we do in trading the pristine method class 
or advanced scalping techniques. Those are the two classes where I teach it and I have a whole chapter on it. Meaning, I'm not going even over the requirements. There are five different requirements for the climo. Um, of course, I've described the picture, but I, I haven't even given you the requirements for it. Okay, so for that, you know, you'd probably need to purchase the course, but what I'm trying to do here is to teach you a process that you can actually apply to multiple, uh, to any other strategy. You can apply the same exact process. What I'm going to teach you is about, is, is, is only relevant to climactics, but you can apply the same kind of process to other strategies. So the first thing I look at when it comes to climactics is the daily chart. And I ask myself, does the daily look good? I mean, does it, is it full or mini? Shouldn't have said, does it look good? Is it full or mini or ba based on the daily? If I see that the daily is down so much, right, far from the moving average, it means it's really extended. Look at the size of the bar, huge. At least 10 times the size of the average bar, right? At least 10 times or about 10, whatever. Huge. Yeah, that's, I would consider that full. Does that make sense? That's full to me. Especially when you have a flat 20. When you have a flat 20 and a big move away from it, the stock always snaps back. If you have a declining 20 and the stock, you know, makes a big move off of it, it may not snap back. But if it's, if it's flat, it means it's sideways. And this is an anomaly. It's just a shakeout or whatever. Some panic. It always snaps back. So the daily was really good on this, on this one. If it's full, we already said full climactics bounce they put in bigger bounce bounces than the small the, than the mini climactics than the stocks that are climactic on, only on the intraday time frames so if it's full target 1 is the 20 ma on the 5 target 2 is the 20 ma on the 15 if it's mini target 1 is the 20 ma on the 1 or the 2 depending on which chart looks better usually the vast majority of the time it's the 2 not the one, okay, the two, but or in this here, I could only fit four time frames. I do use the one, the two, the five, the fifteen, and the daily when I'm playing climactics. In this case, I couldn't fit five time frames, so I'm just using the one. But really, I use the one and the two. So target one is usually the twenty MA on the two. Target two is the twenty MA on the five. When it comes to full climactics, target one is the 20 MA on the five. So we're, we would be expecting a bigger move when it's a full climactic, okay? And then, so that's the first question. It's just two questions, really. Is it full or mini? You answer that. The second question is, is the, does the five minute chart look picture perfect or not picture perfect? If it's picture perfect, what's picture perfect? Picture perfect, first, you really have to know the criteria for the climactic buy setup strategy. But picture perfect in general means, you know, a stock is down a lot and then you get the acceleration. And it's a really big move. The most important elements, two factors when it comes to climactics are, what are they? What, what are the most important things about climactics? Two things that you have to have before you can play it. Two things, what are they? There are five things. There are five requirements. I'm just telling you two here. What are they? Volume and wide range bar, Nitesh is saying. Anybody else? Feel free to also chime in if you're on social media. The answer is five bars, DD, up or down. Not really. The most important thing is acceleration. So you got to have the acceleration. And the second most important thing is the extension. I mean, I shouldn't say second most important. They're both equally important. So you got to have the acceler the extension, meaning the stock has to be at least 2 to 3% away from the 20 MA. At least 2 to 3, minimum. And so if it's a $20 stock, 1% would be 20 cents. 2% would be 40 cents. So... 1950 the 20 was at uh, the 20 ma was at 2050 that's a dollar so that's more than two percent perfect and the and the other thing is the acceleration it could be also sometimes very extended far from the 20 like so but maintaining the same angle the same distance see this the same distance if it looked like this it would have been the same distance so not not good enough 
but like this, that's not the same distance between price and the 20. So the second most the second important uh, the, the second most important thing is the acceleration. You got you have to have the extension. You have to have the acceleration. So if you draw a line, straight line between price and the moving average, you'll see that it was way down at the bottom compared to it, it was you know just getting bigger over time, right? So it's not so it's not the same speed anymore. It's accelerated, okay? So those are the two most important things. Having five bars or more is great too, but sometimes even with four is enough, right? Three might be enough. It's rare. Usually you want to have three or more. I mean, you want to have four or more red bars in a row before you can call something climactic. But I've, I've played against three. I've, I mean, I've played, I've used three. So here's this sell-off and then the doji bar. I'm going to call this picture perfect. We had the vertical drop, the acceleration, the waterfall, and then we got the narrow range bar. It's always nice to get a narrow range bar. If you don't get a narrow range bar and the stock just moves back up without a narrow range bar, usually I can't play it. Because without a narrow range bar, then you don't know that it's going to turn around. I mean, you don't have a tight stop first and foremost. And then usually, as I often say, is when you have a car that's going at 100 miles an hour, in order for it to turn around successfully, it has to slow down a little bit. Has, in order to make a U-turn, you have to slow down a little bit. So if it doesn't slow down, give me at least one narrow range bar, then I'm not going to, you know, if I see a, a, stock going, a car going at 100 miles an hour, and I don't see it slowing down, even if it's signaling, I'm going to assume maybe the guy just left his, the driver left his blinkers on, whatever, right? But uh, if I if I don't see it accelerating, if I don't so you see it slowing down at least, then I I don't I, I don't necessarily believe that they're gonna make a, a U turn or or make a left turn whatever. So the same with stocks. Stocks are like people, like cars. Same thing here. So you gotta have the narrow range bar. If the five minutes is picture perfect, so there are only two questions: full or mini. You answer those because that determines your targets and you and that determines your reward to risk if you don't have enough reward to risk even if the play is good you don't play you can't take it even if the play is good um so that's why it's really important to do the to to, to ask this first full or mini because that determines your target your targets for the play and your targets determine your reward to risk and if the reward to risk is not there even if i love the play i'm not supposed to take it and the second question is, is the five is the intraday is the does the five minute look picture perfect if the answer is yes then go to the one and enter aggressively above the last bars high on the one so enter here stop low the day under low the day always under low the day if the answer is no the five is not good then i don't go to the one then i just look at the 15 and i ask myself does the 15 look good does it look climactic because i gotta have two time frames that look good at least one and two or one and two okay so if the if the five doesn't look picture perfect i don't get aggressive and look and enter off the one i actually do it off the 15. no no i'm sorry i check the 15 and if the 15 looks good and the five looks okay then i enter above the five minute bars high the last bars high stop low today in this case target one and target two is the 20 what's the 20 on the 15 once i get to about 75% to, to target, I start going bar by bar. So I, I would have been out here somewhere. I would have been out there, okay? Even though it actually did continue higher and passed the target up here, closed at the highs, but I would have been out. Got it? So that so that's the, that's the process. We'll do it one or two more times, and then we'll do a quiz, and I'll show you how to write a strategy for climactics. You can copy the same process for any other pattern that you, you like to trade. This is just the climactic pattern, the climactic buy, climactic sell setup. But you can copy the same process and strategy to any other pattern that you that you like, that you like to trade. So full or mini, in this case, now so you might have to, you know, a lot of trading is, is what? Is, uh, is what is discretionary, I guess? The, the beauties in the eye of the beholder, whatever the saying is, 
what you find beautiful, I may find disgusting, and vice versa. So the same with charts, with reading charts. For me, I'm considering this full because we had a flat 20, not a rising 20, flat 20. The stock gapped up and ran up really hard after, after a big move up already. So I'm going to treat this like a full, even though technically speaking, this is the first bar in this direction. So you might, you might, you could argue that this was a mini, not a full. But again, this is the thing about trading is we read charts. We may read charts differently. And we do read charts. There is no one objective reality. And, uh, and so for me, I'm going to consider it full. Now, the second question is, so which means target 1 is the 20 MA on the 5, target 2 is the 20 MA on the 15. Now, the second question is the 5 minute. Does the 5 minute look picture perfect? And the answer is absolutely not. We don't have a huge move up that started to accelerate and go vertical. No, it's just one big move and that's it. Didn't even accelerate that much. So the answer is no. Now, does the 15 look decent? And the answer for me personally, yes, it looked okay. It rallied three bucks from 26 to 29 in 30 minutes, in two 15 minute bars, that's 30 minutes of action, rallied three bucks, okay, over 10% on top of the gap. So I'm going to say, yeah, that's, that's fadeable. You want to, you know, I can fade that, I can short that. But since the five isn't picture perfect, I don't go to the one minute. I just now go back and enter under the five minute bars low, stop above the high. Target one, and target two is the 20 MA on the on the 15. But you have to use a little bit of logic. Is it really going to reverse all of this and drop below it even? No, most likely not. So once it starts to get close to target, about 75%, like I said. But I just go bar by bar. So out right here. Okay, got it. Now, similarly on the five minutes, you don't need to exit the moment it touches the the moving average. If it's just printing narrow range bars and doesn't accelerate into it, you can just go bar by bar, always. If it starts to print wide range bars into it, then yeah, well, you want to take it. You, you don't want to keep trailing it because you end up giving back too much. So bar by bar would have kept you in it to here, till here. So tar what I'm trying to say is target one and target two was probably the same exit in this case. Got it? Now, comments, even if the five was picture perfect, notice how the one minute was did not provide a clear entry, was basing at the high, so it was, would have been tough to play off the one, even if you really like the five. I wouldn't have played it off the one. I would have deferred to the five or, or the two minute. Okay? All right. Hopefully all of this is making a lot of sense. Notice it's none of this is ho mumbo jumbo, hocus pocus stuff like you see everywhere on the internet. This is all reasonable stuff with kind of precise logic, entry, m precise method. So so I hope this is all making sense to you. Of course, if you're on social media, I'm not really on social media right now, meaning I, don't, I, don't, I can't see your questions, but feel free to send them in and I'll try my best to answer. Okay? Um, if, and if you're in the coaching room, this is a repeat for you. Uh, so, but feel free to also ask ask questions. So, okay, one last example, I think, before we look at some quiz, uh, some other charts. So, daily, first red bar. So, that's a mini already. You immediately know it's a first red bar and it's not a huge red bar, right? And it wasn't an uptrend, meaning if it was an extended uptrend and then you got one big green bar, then it w you could have considered it full even with just one green bar if it was a long the long, uh, I mean, it was if it was in the direction of the trend. When it's against the trend, you almost always, and you get a red bar against the uptrend, it's almost always a mini. But this was a really good mini because it was falling really hard into r the rising 20 and into a lot of support. So I would have expected a big move out of this, but it was a mini. Target one is the 20 MA on the one or the two, target two is the 20 MA on the five. But you have to also use a little bit of logic. You just entered here. Stop right here. You love this play. Look at the five minute. Absolutely picture perfect. Look at the size, how this was a big wide range red bar at the bottom. Picture perfect. You just entered. Do you, are you really supposed to be getting out right here five, sec, five cents later? Right? No. So even though my s strategy w w says, oh, say, 
exit at the one, 20 MA on the one. I wouldn't have. This is when you differ from the, fr this is when you deviate, when you can deviate from your trading plan. You can deviate from your trading plan when logic ne makes it necessary. Okay? When rational thought says, yeah, the trading plan is ink on paper, it's really important that I follow it, but sometimes the, mar the market is dynamic. It's not ink on paper. You have to adjust and adapt. So that's when you, when you deviate from it. But when you're not supposed to deviate from it is when you get emotional or you, you start, you know, you want to revenge trade or you want to start doing stuff, stupid stuff that has no basis other than you're just trying to make yourself feel better. W why do people take revenge? And they go, we go to great lengths to take revenge. Why? Th is it because you're better off by taking revenge? No, it's because you j just love seeing the other, just it gives you an emotional outlay or outlet. Does that make sense? So it's just to feel better. You don't want to trade to feel better. That's the key part. You want to trade. You can change your plan a little bit if necessary, but only if, again, logic necessitates it. That's it. If conditions make it necessary. That's it. Okay? All right. So target one, target two, but in reality, that was target one, and target two is the 20 MA on the 15. Okay? All right. Good. Good stuff. Uh, how about this as a quiz? We'll start with the, di with the uh, here's the process. It's very simple. Two questions, really. Two questions, full or mini. I'm showing you the one minute, five minute, 15 and the daily. Very simple. If you've, if you've followed along so far, it should be very piece, of, yeah, piece of cake. Okay, full, correct, that's full. Look at the size of the bars on the data chart. That's not sustainable. Not sustainable. Full. Okay, great. Five minutes. Was the five minute picture perfect? Would you consider this, this picture perfect? I'm not saying was this the best five minute climactic you've ever seen. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying was it, did it look like it met all the criteria? Did it have the acceleration, the extension, the number of bars, the volume? Did it have all of that stuff where the bar is getting bigger and bigger, which means not sustainable. It means every bar is, is, is getting fat. The stock is getting faster and faster as it prints more bars. And the answer is yes. So for me, the five minute was picture perfect. If the five minutes picture perfect, enter above the last, go to the one, enter above the last one, one minute bar is high or the two minute, stop under the low. Full, so target one. 20 MA on the 5, target 2, 20 MA on the 15. Okay? Now, the truth is, this happened at 3.57 p.m. So we only had three minutes left or something like this when I played it. But I love stocks that go climactic into the close. Not perhaps at 3.57, like at 3.50 or so would be good, 3.45, because it means people are panicking into the close. They don't want to keep it overnight. And it usually gets, you get that bounce back from short covering. And anybody that has a brain that says, oh, that's, that's, that's panic selling. Let me buy it. So you get that. But in this case, we, we only, we did get a dollar. I, I did get a dollar out of it in three minutes, but we ran out of time. So it never really got to the targets. Okay. Uh, yeah, you could keep, that's right, you could keep some the next day, but I usually do not keep any, uh, I don't keep anything, uh, any day trades overnight unless I get a big bounce on the, I mean, on the intraday. If I get a big bounce on the intraday and it holds, then I can keep it, yes, because the daily looked really good to, to keep for a couple days. In this case, it was only three minutes prior to the close, so I, I you know, I didn't keep any. I didn't think to keep any, and I didn't keep any. All right? Good. Next one. Full or mini. Let's get some participation in the coaching room. Let's get some more participation. Full or mini. One bar. Just one bar. On the daily chart. So usually, usually that's mini. Usually that's mini, but you, you have to also be a little more reasonable. But look at the size of the bar. 
I mean, look at the size of the bar. Isn't this 10 times the average size bar? Yeah, I would say so. Flat 20 also, meaning it should bounce back. Remember what I said when it's a flat 20? So I'm going to consider this, even though my trading plan says if it's just one bar, it's mini, I'm going to consider it full. I'm going to, meaning I'm going to look for big targets on this, not small targets. Okay, next question is, was the five minute picture perfect or not? You have to think about the five minute at, when it was at the bottom here with, with the wide range bar at the bottom. So, okay, does that make sense? So you, you hide this stuff and with the wide range bar, was it, full, was it really, really good? Answer is, yeah, this was really good. If that's the case, then enter above the one minute, stop low the day, long, stop. Uh, stop load of the day and target, target one and target two. Okay, look at this beautiful move up, nice controlled move up. I mean, that's totally your exit for sure. So, got it? Very, very easy. They're not always this pretty. This is, they're not always this pretty. Okay, the daily, I'm not gonna, ev gonna even ask. Full, of course. I mean, if you say mini, it means you, you haven't, we're not on the same page. It means exit the, the, this webinar already and come back to it later on and start over. I'm, I'm not kidding, because this is as good of a daily as it gets, as you'll ever see. Now the five minute, is that, was that picture perfect? Or, or not picture perfect, was it ideal? Answer is no, not ideal at all. Narrow range bars, we want a big drop, we want wide range bars, vertical move down, that's not good, that's not even good enough. So no. Now, it doesn't mean you can't play it, you have to go to the 15, ask, myself, ask yourself, was the, did the 15 look good? The answer is yeah, it looked good. Look at this, down a lot, biggest volume bar, narrow range bar, of course. Okay, then let's play it over the five minute bars high with a stop under the low. Target one and target two. Pretty sweet move here, really nice move. Basically, this little move here went climactic. Would you believe it? Look at this. Five or more green bars, the volume spike, the narrow range, the U-turn. So it actually went, it could have been a short right here. But usually I don't recommend going against, you know, you played it long, I wouldn't flip it. Usually it's not recommended. You'll end up, you'd end up messing the play up. So I usually don't recommend it. All right. This one is a little bit confusing because you have to think about the daily, the way it looked when the stock went climactic, when it was up here. How did the daily look? It was a big green bar to here. Got it? So you have to, so I took a picture at the end of the day, but you actually have to look at it. You have to imagine what it looked like and it was a big green bar. So with that piece of information already kind of known looked like this was this full or mini full or mini mini correct correct it was the first bar in this direction but my friends notice that it was into a ton of minor minor resistance a ton of minor resistance just think about the people that were stuck in it long don't do you, don't you think they would want their money back and declining 20 right here so it was a really good mini to play it short up here into minor resistance minor resistance i've already done a lesson on the difference between minor resistance and major resistance minor doesn't mean like weak and major means really strong or significant no there are just two different names to resistance to supply areas minor resistance is a great area when you're trying, when you play, um, when you're looking to play climactic to enter at, major resistance is not. Minor resistance is, but not major resistance. But this is another topic for another day. Okay, let me ask you the next question then. Was the five minute picture perfect or not? That's the five minute time frame. Picture perfect or not picture perfect? What do you think? Abso-freaking-lutely, <laughs> absolutely, right? Look at this, up to, ten, look, from 92.50 to 104, right? Remember I told you this was a $25 move, not, not really, not even 
20 like I showed you on the chart earlier is a $25 move 92.50 to one of look at this look how it went vertical just connect the bars the lows look at that vertical look at the size of the bar last bar look at the volume bar how big it was if that's not climactic then I don't know what is okay let's assume the answer is no not picture perfect not picture perfect okay and let's and and the the 15 was good enough to you know was good up here so the entry would be where where would the entry be if the answer was no not picture perfect where would the entry be and you were okay with the the way the 15 looked where would you enter based on my process the the process that I've been teaching you Let me know when you've ans made you know when you've thought it through and typed in the answer. So let me just be let me just repeat the question one more time. Let me just repeat the question. We so we said the five minute was picture perfect, but let's assume it wasn't. Let's say the answer wasn't. Now the next step after that is look at the fifteen. Was the fifteen good? And we said yes, it was. No, now where would the entry be the correct entry it would have been under which which time frame five or one it would have been under the five minute bar right but here again you have to think a little bit do you want really want to see the stock drop at least four bucks before you get before you enter no, that's too big of a drop to the entry before you even enter. Would be too big of a drop. Okay? So if you, even if the five wasn't picture perfect, you have to enter off the, the, the one minute. Or not at all. Or just say, well, I'm going to have to pass on it. If you didn't like this one minute, the five didn't offer a good entry, really. It was too big of a, of a stop. Would have been too big of a stop. So either under the one stop up here or not at all. But this this five minute was so good. The one minute was so good also with that narrow body bar, which is my favorite reversal bar of all time. Oh, so good. And then it was a two dollar two dollar stop, but it just collapsed, dropped another twelve bucks or more, right? More, um, thirteen bucks. So amazing, amazing play. All right, here's here's the here's how I turn a pattern into a strategy I look at I take any pattern take any pattern you like breakouts pullbacks um, whatever it is any pattern you want uh, cup and handle head and shoulders whatever triangles all kinds of stuff there's tons of patterns out there but you can't just play it as a pattern. You have to turn it into a strategy. What's a strategy? A strategy is when you cover the other aspects to trading, not just the pattern requirements, not just the ABC. Oh, it has to have three bars of this color. It has to be touching the 20 MA on this time frame. Those are th that's the technical picture or the pattern requirements. That's great. But it's got to you got to address the other aspects that 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 we uh, that we we consider before we take in, take on on a trade, such as the market. What kind of a market do we have right now? Such as the reward to risk. How is the reward? Do you have enough reward to risk? Such as does does the stock is the stock showing you signs that make it make the strategy null and void, meaning make it not playable. Those are the can't haves for the stock or the market. Maybe the market just got hammered with news. You don't want to be maybe starting a short position or a long position or whatever, right? So a strategy addresses the other factors other than just the technical picture, other than just the chart, the, the requirements for that pattern, okay? Otherwise, go to Google right now and type in pattern requirements for and fill in the blank and you'll probably get some good ideas of what the requirements are. But those alone don't work. 
unless you address the multiple time frames, the market. The, uh, what I like to, to do is divide every strategy into four sections. The must-haves, where I describe the pattern requirements, and the additional requirements, such as, again, the reward to risk, the relative strength, relative weakness, whatever. It depends on the pattern. It's different from pattern to pattern. If it's a pullback, then I would describe the, the retracement percentage, the, the for sure the relative strength, relative weakness of the market, the rising 20, if it's there or not. So it depends. And then the market requirements. Does the, if, if, it's a, if this strategy is affected by the market, how does, what does the market need to look like before you actually get in it? That needs to be defined already in your trading plan. It's important to have that defined in advance because when we're trading, we don't we lose we lose sense of the we just get we jump right in and we lose track of what we're supposed to be doing. Oftentimes, so you have to do the preparation in advance, not while you're trading. You have to prepare correctly so that when you're trading, you know exactly what you're supposed to be looking for, and you don't kind of just wing it because winging it is not how you can become a professional successful trader okay winging it never leads anywhere no matter what endeavor what the field you're in you can't wing it Spe not when your money is on the line and the market is moving at 100 miles an hour right so must haves and then can't haves for the stock and the market for the stock and the market what if today would you want to play if uh, stock long if today was this, let's say, con, almost basically a tier one gap down? Would you, but it wasn't tier one because it was too big. Would you want to play this long? It made, I mean, most of it came from the con, I think 1500 bucks today. Not a lot, but at least I show you my P&L, uh, okay? That's 1572. Um, would you play or a road would you want to play that climactic probably not for me when it's really good on the day really bearish on the daily even if the intraday looks phenomenal i usually pass 99 percent of the time so what are what, what are the, your can't haves for the stock and the market what if the market is just breaking down do you want to be starting a long position probably not so the must haves the can't haves and the would like to have what are the things that you would like to have the icing on the cake that would make this setup a no-brainer. Maybe the daily being extended to the downside. Maybe the market also extended to the downside. Maybe a reversal time. Maybe a spike in volume on the intraday. Again, it depends from stock from uh, from pattern to pattern, from pattern to pattern. It depends what they would like to have are. But these are not an absolute must. If they if they come, great makes it even better. If not, you can still play them. And then the last section is what I like to call the trade metrics, or it's your entry, where you where your entry is. For example, remember for mini versus full, the entry the entries could be different based on whether the, the play is mini or full. I'm sorry, based on whether it's the five minutes picture perfect or not, right? Um, the stop, the target, remember the targets are different if it's mini or full, right? And then the management. What are how are you going to manage them? This is probably perhaps the missing piece of the puzzle when it comes to climactic. Is, is that people even if they can get in at the top, stock comes in a little bit and they're out. And when it goes against them, they hold it. So they they get out too soon. So how do you manage climactics? This is really important. How do you manage climactics? There's a specific management policy that I follow. Okay. But that's how I build uh, strategies for any pattern that I'm that I want to trade or test. Sometimes I see something new, and I want to test it out. That's that's the format for writing a strategy. All right. Are there any questions? We're kind of done for today. Any questions? Let me know. All right. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, discussion. I certainly wasn't, you know, didn't ru rush through it like I did last time. Um, okay, hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to participate in Climos and see how we trade them, 
I invite you to subscribe or try out the Strategic Day Trader for 30 days for only 49 bucks. Just give it a try. This is what it costs to, it, it costs even more to have a decent dinner for two these days than 49 bucks. So it's almost free, almost. Give it a try, 30 days, and see how we do it in the, how we professionally trade climactics in the Strategic Day Trader. You might say, well, no, wait a second, I'm a swing trader. Then check out the Strategic Swing Trader for also only $49 if you're new. After that, it's 95 bucks a month, month to month, no long con long term contracts or commitments. 49 for the first month, 95 month to month afterwards. If you have any questions about how to join or anything else, reach out to our customer service at info at t3live.com, info at t3live.com, or you can call them at 888-998-3548. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful evening, everybody.